A sermon for the Feast of Pentecost. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The words from our responsory, but do we really believe them? Are we prepared to admit that we depend upon God's strength more than our own? Paul did. There is no question of having sufficient power in ourselves. We cannot claim anything on our own. The power we have comes from God, says Paul. He knew that only through the Spirit will we be able to achieve what God has created us for. In our readings this evening, Paul provides us with two contrasting images, one where God's power has been veiled by human weakness and one where it's fully released through the power of Jesus Christ. We're going to look at each one in turn to see if it helps us understand which one we're living under. As far as Moses was concerned, having God alongside them, guiding his people to the promised land, was the best thing that could have happened. It meant they had their most powerful ally and friend with them to help them. Teach me to know your ways so I can know you and continue in favour with you. For this nation is your own people, says Moses. Indeed, if you do not go yourself, do not send us up from here. Moses had come a long way since he first led the people out of Israel. Then he was unsure who the God of the burning bush really was. But now he had developed a close personal relationship with him. He would meet him face to face in a special tent outside the camp where he was able to talk to him as one man talks to another. Ask for his help plead for his people. To the Israelites, the meeting tent became a visible sign of God's presence within their community. And when the pillar of cloud came down over the tent while Moses was in it, the people knew they would be talking. Each time Moses went into God's presence, he was recharged with his power, so much so that when he came out, the people could see the difference on his face. It was so noticeable that after leaving the tent and speaking to them, he would put a veil over his face so that, as Paul puts it, they would not see God's glory fade. Moses knew that when he was away from God, he could never reach the same heights as when he was with him. He knew his power was weak by comparison and the people would soon see the effect of that weakness. But only when he returned to the meeting tent and the veil was lifted off would he be recharged once more. But by veiling his face, Moses also stopped the people seeing the effect of God's grace on the human spirit. They couldn't see what difference God's power could make to their lives. In our New Testament reading, Paul uses this as an illustration of the fading nature of the written law over the spiritual law. The old covenant given through Moses was carved on tablets of stone and though it was good and brought glory to God, it would soon fade. Not because the covenant was weak, but because human nature was weak. Because in the end, we can't please God by our own efforts. So God made a new covenant, one that gave full access to him, that would open our eyes to his love that would be built on the past, but would also provide the power to carry it out, a covenant that would be launched through his son. Which brings us to our second image. God working through Jesus. When Jesus came, he brought God's presence and power. Through Jesus, God's law is no longer written on tablets of stone, but directly onto our hearts. So that when we put our faith in him, we also receive spiritual regeneration. Through Jesus, God became flesh, came down to live amongst them, to show us his love at first hand. Love that is at the centre of his relationship with God and his relationship with us. Through his love, we are all one with him and the Father and can become the people God wants us to be. Jesus died on the cross to remove barriers that separate us from God and each other, 
so that our sins can be forgiven. We can be reconciled back to the Father. Through the cross, the strength of God's love more than matches the power of sin. Through the cross, we are led to a freedom from failure and frustration. We no longer have hostile feelings towards ourselves, others, towards God. And in our New Testament lesson, Paul reminds us that through Jesus, we have the means of receiving an even greater glory than in the time of Moses, a glory that will not fade. Jesus is our new intercessor, and because Jesus is God, we can now talk directly to God. Jesus can also reach our hearts, so we can meet him face to face. We are also charged up with his power, permanently. The Jews became too entangled with the rules and ceremonies of the Old Testament law to see the truth. They were veiled from understanding what Jesus was really doing for them. What Paul's telling us is that if we turn to Jesus and have faith in him, he will remove our veil, enable us to see the full measure of God's power. Often we feel too frightened to lift our veils and fully depend on Jesus in case we're left out vulnerable. But Paul tells us that there's nothing to fear. The veil removed by Jesus will not reveal our weakness, but will illuminate our strengths and help our us to be transformed into his likeness. Through Jesus we see what God is like and if we follow him we can what what we can also become. The death and resurrection of Jesus brings life, hope and power, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, set him at the right hand of God and it's available to us today through his Son and his Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the way God has chosen to change our attitudes towards him and those around us. The Spirit breathes the life and power of God into us, prompts us into action, telling us what to say, giving us the boldness to say it. The Spirit brings freedom from everyday pressures and worries, freedom from fear and uncertainty. There are many things we try to hide from the world and from God, so we don't see our own guilt. And we need to change, to stop us acknowledging what God is trying to tell us. For the Spirit to work in us, Paul says we must practice seeing as a mirror the glory and worth of God. Just as mirrors facing the sun will reflect the sunlight, so we too must reflect the image of Jesus reflect our relationship with him so that others can see his transforming power. When we focus on ourselves, we become preoccupied with ourselves. When we focus on Jesus, we become like Jesus. But we cannot change into his likeness using our own strength. We need the help, gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit works in us through prayer, Bible reading. And when we're in fellowship with others, and as his followers, we are given a mission to bring Jesus to those who don't know him, to carry God's good news message wherever he tells us to. And only through the Spirit are we given the means and the power to do it. So what power level are we working under? The power of the stone or the power of the Spirit? A power that's veiled or a power that's free and open? At Pentecost, God gave us a new beginning, a new opportunity to be transformed into his likeness, to be permanently changed, charged with his spirit, to go boldly where we have not gone before. No matter where we are in our Christian journey, God is telling us to put aside our own strength and only depend on his, to let him shape our present and our future, let him fill us with the power that will change us, and the lives of those around us. There is no question of us having sufficient power in ourselves. We cannot claim anything on our own. The power we have comes from God. Let's believe and trust in this and go forward in the light and strength of God and the Spirit.